Hi there, and thanks for stopping by my channel. If you're new here, this is a channel all about photography, specifically large format photography. And if you watched any of my previous videos, you'll see some footage of me driving down a dirt road or setting up camp in some remote locations. And I've actually received a lot of questions about the vehicle that I'm driving and just sort of how I have it set up. So in this week's video, what I wanna do is give you a tour of my 2003 Mercedes-Benz G500. But before we get into the tour, I wanna to discuss the elephant in the room, and that is the price. I didn't spend $100,000. I, I, I bought this G-Wagon for $27,500, and I got it from a real estate agent who just babied the thing, um, which is another great thing about them. No one actually takes them off-road, so you can find really clean examples. Um, but now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and take a tour of the G-Wagon. So for wheels, I have, this is a 16 inch wheel. Um, this is actually a G-Wagon wheel. Um, in the US, we only get the 18 inch wheels offered to us. Um, but in Europe, before 2002, I think this one actually came off a 98 G-Wagon, um, they offered 16 inch wheels, which just gives you a little more sidewall so that you can, uh, you can <laughs> tell I've rubbed some rocks on these things. So that's exactly what it's for. And uh, for the uh, tire, it's a very kind of unique size. It's a 255 85 16. So it's a 33 inch tall tire, but it's a little narrower um, than most tires. And uh, that just fits in the wheel well perfectly. And I think it's the perfect size for the G Wagon. You can actually fit, you can fit 35s in here with stock suspension. Um, but to be honest, I'm a little more concerned with fuel economy than fitting a 35 inch tire. So. Um, as far as ground clearance goes, I have plenty of ground clearance under my diffs, and uh, I will say while I'm here, I'm not a big fan of lifting a vehicle. I think it just kind of increases the uh, height of the vehicle and uh, the point of tippage, I guess you can say it. The pucker factor goes up when you're off camera, so <laughs> I'm not a big fan of it. Um, but if you have to lift your vehicle to get bigger tires, that's really the only way to do it, then, then go for it. Um, but I was happy to find out that you can fit 35s in here if you want. Um, but 33s, they've been great. And I'm getting um, pretty much exactly the same mileage as I got before I uh, stuck a bigger wheel in there. So happy with that. Um, but now let's move on to the back and we'll talk about the suspension, nothing too special. Just a touch on suspension here for a sec. Um, it's completely stock. In fact, when I got the vehicle, the previous owner had some two inch spacers he put between the uh, coils and the body. But I removed that just because I prefer it at stock height. Um, and one thing to mention about the springs, from what I researched, there's only a couple of companies that have access to these special machines that make the springs. They're called progressive coil springs. And uh, what that's supposed to do is make the ride quality on-road the same as off-road. Um, so the more weight you have in the vehicle, the harder you're hitting, the stiffer the springs become as they compress. Um, that's what I understand. I could be wrong. Um, Eibach, the company that uh, manufactures the springs for Mercedes, um, they have a patent on this machine. So I really feel like they've put in the R&D to, to produce this spring, and uh, I don't really see a reason to change it out. Um, I do know they make stiffer spring rates, so I may end up one day changing out the rears to something a little stiffer as I add weight into the vehicle. Um, but so far, it's riding, uh, it's riding perfectly level, so it, it seems to be fine with what I have in there now. Um, but for shocks, again, stock. Um, I am probably due for an, uh, a replacement pretty soon, um, but I just haven't gotten around to it. So, so this is the uh, back of the G-Wagon, and um, basically what I've done here is I've removed the original um, door card that was here, replaced it with this aluminum sheet, and then I wrapped it. Uh, initially, I was going to sleep inside the vehicle, and that saved me about two inches of space because it kind of stuck out kind of far. Um, but I'm six foot three and I just it wasn't quite comfortable to be honest it's a little little too tight for me and um, so I removed that to try it out but it didn't work out 
And then I bought this off of a military G-Wagon. Uh, this just covers the, um, the motor for the, the rear wiper. On the back, there's a spare tire, and I also have a nice little storage area. I'll show you that real quick. So, so behind the tire, um, be, behind the bag here, is this box. So the, the way the G-Wagon uh, spare tire sits is it's reversed. So the front of the wheel is over here, and you have this big empty cavity. And uh, there's a company, G-Wagon Accessories, makes this plate. And I have some, um, I have some charging cables. I have a tool roll in here that I keep some spare tools just in case I need to do repairs. And then I have this uh, Blue Ridge Overland uh, bag that, that is connected via these straps to the, to the rear tire. And I keep some spare oil in here and a trash bag in there. And I just basically use it as a trash bag and a place to either store my dirty boots if I've been hiking in some mud or um, some wood or anything I need to use for a campfire. So that's been really useful. But yeah, so for the rear here, uh, I've built out, like I said in the previous episode, I'm a woodworker and there's not too many offerings as far as drawer systems in a G-Wagon. Front Runner offers something, but to be honest, I knew I could build something better so and save a little money as well. So what I have here are just two drawers. Um, you'll notice the space here and that's because the door doesn't open full 90. Um, so that allows this to clear and they have these little locking um, handles but I like that they push in because this literally sits flush with this with this piece here and yeah so I'll open this I gotta push the yellow down because these drawer slides are lock in lock out so once they're out if you're parked on a hill it's really nice to have that feature and I've been here, I've got a bunch of um, camping accessories, you know, like cooking accessories, I mean. Um, plates, I have a little like uh, sink for washing dishes, cast iron skillet, some plates, um, some different plates. I've got some uh, coffee filters and my little MSR um, water boiler and a pot down here and a stove. So quite a lot jammed into this drawer. And I'm trying, I'm actually want to kind of downsize everything in here. Um, the stove I have is this big partner steel two burner stove. And I want to get something that's smaller, uh, like a backpacking stove. I think Sea to Summit makes it. Um, it's like a, it runs off of propane, um, but it's a much smaller footprint. Because eventually what I'd like to do is take all this stuff and compact it down and have it into this drawer. Because this drawer isn't very full, I just keep my my hose here for my tank, you know, soap, like a bottle openers, extra fuel, paper towels, uh, my cutlery and my spices and my sugar goes into this bag. Also made by Blue Ridge Overland Gear. Good stuff. Um, I highly recommend the Chemex uh, Funix Filter Drip Coffee Maker. It's basically a pour over, but it's like... It's a tiny little thing and you put it directly onto the cup that you're drinking out of and it's just the best coffee. Um, so recommend that. Um, so yeah, that's the drawer system and I forgot to show you, but of course being me, I went a little fancy and uh, they're all dovetailed and this is, this is a maple drawer with some cherry fronts, um, but all of the internals is actually half inch ply because I wanted to keep it as light as I could. And the top is about five eighths, five eighths inch um, cherry. I, you know, milled it myself so I can kind of pick and choose how thick I was going to go. And the reason I went five eighths is because I wanted to stick this track here. You see here, um, this is Mac track and I have these uh, little things that connect in here and I can strap things down to the top of this deck and this deck was actually designed to double as my film loading area so it's perfect height I could put my changing bag in here and you know load my film while I'm out in the field um, because most of the time I don't have access to like a picnic table or anything so I needed a spot to do my loading um, and yeah that's about it for the back I've got the ladder obviously that helps me get up top and that holds the propane tank here. So 
So this uh, table here is pretty much how I prep and cook off of. Uh, in fact, it's called the Porta Prep. <laughs> it's made by Terra Wagon. They, they make a bunch of Sprinter accessories. I don't think they make this anymore. But essentially, the way it works is you have to replace this piece here. And it's a nice uh, machined piece to match the rest of the G-Wagon, but they have these little indents. And it just clips in here. And then you have a little leg that's adjustable. And when you're on uneven terrain, you can level out your table. And uh, yeah, it's been a great little, uh, great little area to cook from. And when I open this door, So in here, which is uh, my nice large fridge right next to the table here, so if I'm cooking I can just, you know, take stuff out and put it right there. Um, but it is a very large fridge. <laughs> it is, I don't remember the size, but pretty much the largest fridge that Snowmaster offers. Um, it's a 12 volt fridge, and it has uh, two sections. So the big section and this little section here is like the freezer, and it comes with these baskets. So essentially it's a double decker. On the bottom section, I keep um, just boxes of 8x10 film. I can fit four boxes in there, uh, which is more than I'll ever need on a trip. Um, and I keep my food that needs to stay nice and cool in this section, which is the smaller of the two. And in this section, pretty much just use it as like a, like a pantry. You know, it's a bunch of dry goods stay in there. And, Typically I have enough food to last me about two weeks. And I don't know if you can see it, but right here there's some stainless steel jerry cans. And I keep about 10 gallons of fresh water with me um, before I go on a trip. And right here, right behind the passenger seat is where I store my um, bag that holds my film holders. So there's 10 film holders in here. That's 20 sheets of film. And then I keep, you know, another 40 sheets with me in the freezer. So I have plenty of film. And um, right here, I'll actually move the camera so you can see, is a uh, 100 amp hour uh, Battleborn lithium battery. I don't have it hardwired into the, uh, the G-Wagon yet. That's on the to-do list. Right now, I basically just top it off when I get home and set it in the car, plug in the fridge, and... Um, it runs for about six days before I've run out of battery. So I try to eat all the uh, cold food, <laughs> you know, the stuff that's gonna go bad if I don't have a fridge first. And then if I'm on a trip that extends out past a week, I'm typically eating uh, everything left in the pantry. So that's sort of how I have it set up right now. So behind the uh, driver's seat here, I keep my camera bag right here. And this is where I have the uh, 100 amp hour lithium battery. Right here on the back of the driver's seat, I just keep um, these Blue Ridge Overland gear bags. And essentially I put toiletries in here and uh, this one holds like a water bottle, but right now I just got some batteries and random stuff in there. So I don't know if there's too much to show in the front, but I'll uh, show you what it looks like. In the passenger seat, I just keep my video kit just so I can access it pretty quick. And then I, on the floor there, I have my 4x10 and some lenses that are, I don't really use very often. Um, I keep those down there. Uh, but other than that, the dash is pretty stock. Uh, it's a 2003, so you know there's no like Bluetooth. So I have a little plug that I've installed that charges the phone and lets me play music through the speakers. Um, other than that, there's not much going on. So I think it's a good time to take a look at the roof rack and everything I have up there. So moving on to the roof rack here. This is made by Front Runner and it's holding an AUCAB 270 degree awning. I think they call this the shadow on. And uh, it's, a, it's a great awning. I really, really like it. And uh, it has been through quite a lot. This is actually one of the first awnings that they imported into the U.S. And I had my eye on it for a while. Um, but to be honest, it's a little bit heavy. The G-Wagon has a very high center of gravity. When I sit in, I'm six foot three. If I'm sitting inside, I have a foot of headroom. And um, that's another reason why I'm not a fan of lifting this thing. 
So trying to keep the weight off the roof is, is a real goal of mine. That's why I went with the, the tent that I have. So it's an auto home Columbus. It's one of the lighter rooftop tents. I think it's about 130 pounds. It, one nice thing about the, the rooftop tent is it opens in about like 10 seconds. So if I'm getting into camp late, I don't have to sit there and fumble around with a, with a fold out tent or anything or a ground tent. And just having that ability to set up tent, the tent in like 10 seconds and break it down in the morning in about 30 seconds uh, has been really helpful. And uh, that's kind of why I went with the rooftop tent as soon as I figured out I couldn't sleep in the back. Um, then on the other side, I have a shovel. Um, if you don't know what the shovel's for, you haven't been camping enough. <laughs> so now we're looking at the front and I haven't really done much up here. I've added the uh, fender, like little diamond plate fender guards here. That's just if I have tools or something, if I'm working on the, on the truck, I'm not scratching the paint. And sometimes I'll put my coffee cup here in the morning. Um, but the paint is obviously not a big concern of mine anymore. <laughs> it's not a, a garage kept vehicle. I use it a lot and it's also my daily driver. And um, the only other thing that I can think of that I'd like to do, well, two things. I'd like to put a winch up here. Sometimes I find myself in some sticky situations and that would just make me feel a little more secure. And there's a company that makes a solar panel that fits right on the top of this hood. And that would be nice just to have that extra uh, battery charging capability there. So, um, but other than that, I think that pretty much covers the, the G-Wagon here. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, but in a couple weeks, we're going to start season two off and it'll be all about photography again. So, but as always, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.